today I am going to talk about dental implant. It is one of the important topic in dentistry. It is both needed in periodontics and prosthodontics and even uh, oral surgery. Now moving towards the topic, dental implant, what do you mean by dental implant? Dental implant is a prosthetic device that is made up of alloplastic material which is kept under the mucosa or periosteal layer or inside the bone which is used to retain and support the removal or fixed prosthesis. Now moving towards classification of dental implant, it has been classified on the basis of uh, placement inside the tissue, on the basis of material, on the basis of uh, surface and on the basis of mic microscopic or macro design. Now moving towards the placement within the body tissue, it can be placed uh, under the mucosa that is called intramucosal, uh, under the periosteum, subperiosteal, inside the bone, bone that is endosteal and trans transosteal or transmandibular that is uh, piercing both the cortices of the bone upper and lower that is transmandibular or transosteal uh, type of implant on the basis of materials used that can be metal and metal alloys, titanium is used titanium and its alloys or tantalum or chromium, uh, cobalt chromium molybdenum alloys and others are polymers and carbon and others are uh, ceramics based on the surface of the implant that can be smooth or uh, textured or coated or machined or based on the microscopic design they are ma on, in microscopic design that can be cylindrical blade like disc like pins, screwed or tapered and screwed shaped. Now moving towards the surface characteristics or micro design of the implant. That is surface characteristics. There are two processes, one is additive and one is subtractive. additive and other is sub, subtractive. In additive process, uh, addition of some uh, uh, materials are uh, done on the implant so the, the surface characteristics uh, of the implant is improved. Like in additive process, uh, inorganic uh, metal co mineral coatings can be done or plasma, is, plasma is spraying or uh, bio, uh, bio compatible materials like fluoride, uh, hydroxyapatite are coated on the surface of the implant body and in, sub in subtractive process there is a, a sand blasting can be done, acid etching can be done or machining can be done. Moving towards why titanium is most used. We should know first that why titanium is used most because it is the one of the biocompatible materials like means it, it is compatible with the uh, surrounding tissues, there is no allergic reaction and it has high ultimate strength and low specific weight and it has strength to weight ratio is more so with, uh, with the less weight of the implant there is high strength and it is also very high corrosion resistance and titanium, titanium uh, is used in the implant and alpha form, alpha form is mainly used if it is unalloyed, means if single titanium is uh, pure titanium is, is used, then its alpha form is used. Alloy form, then it has a formula of Pi6Al4B, that is titanium, aluminium, vanadium. If it is used in alloy form, and this alpha form is unalloyed form, means pure titanium form then it is used as alpha form if it is used in alloy form then it is used along with aluminium and vanadium uh, yeah, there are uh, some uh, disadvantage of using aluminium and vanadium so the newer components like tantalum and uh, are zirconiums are used in newer implants now moving towards the rationale behind use of using implants. There are different options for the uh, if the tooth is lost we have different options like 
a partial a removal partial denture fixed partial dentures and one of the option is dental implant why we use dental implant there are few rational uh, behind using dental implant uh, for the placement of missing tooth there is uh, first of all there, there is preservation of residual bone by using implant the surrounding bone which is left after the extraction that bone is uh, preserved and there is a uh, physiological aspects of tooth loss if we leave the uh, space that is missing uh, tooth space then there will be uh, progressive bone loss on that area consequences of fixed prosthetic failure fixed prosthetic there is a need for preparation of adjacent tooth but in implant there is no need of uh, preparation of adjacent tooth and also poor uh, performance by the uh, removal partial denture like uh, rpd it does not last uh, for long time and uh, it uh, it is uh, more chances of fracture of rpd so uh, implant is one of the better option because implant is long lasting and it has less chance of fracture and other uh, consequences and increased public awareness because of the increased public awareness people want to have more aesthetic uh, treatment because the uh, rpd and fixed uh, does not provide as much as aesthetic as implant because while using implant the emergence profile of the tooth it is similar to the natural tooth so implant has more aesthetically importance for the uh, patient there are indications of dental implant where to use dental implant if there is a dental stress the whole uh, whole uh, tooth has been lost we can use implant implant supported prosthesis implant supported dentures if single tooth loss uh, single tooth uh, multiple tooth that is partial dental stress there also we can use implant you can use implant implant in patient who has hyperactive uh, gag who have excessive gag reflex while using rpd or uh, cd then we can use implant and the some people have unreal denture uh, expectation they want their uh, uh, cd complete denture or rpd uh, much aesthetic but that cannot be achieved with implant it can be achieved much better aesthetically uh, aesthetic is given by implant and unfavorable morphological condition of the uh, mouth for the uh, removal prosthesis or fixed prosthesis then we can consider implant now contraindication uh, we have talked about uh, rationale indication now moving to us contraindication in contraindication there are absolute and relative now what is uh, what are the absolute contraindication for dental implant like uh, if the patient has alcohol or drug abuse uh, abuse history or the uh, patient is using drug or alcohol excessively and or the patient has psychological problem or psychotic syndromes like schizophrenia if the patient is pregnant or the patient has history of iv biphosphonate uh, therapy or the patient has history of smoking plus radiation therapy of headache head and neck reason because there is multiple effects of radiation therapy so we can't use uh, dental implant in that case because there will be no proper healing of bone and mucosas and uh, other supporting tissues and relative contraindication relative contraindication like diabetes mellitus uh, in that we can uh, generally we don't use but uh, with certain precautions or uh, modification we can even use in that so it is relative diabetes mellitus bone metabolic disease like, like osteoporosis smoking or tobacco use history uh, or current infection like endodontic infection that is relative contraindication if a, if a patient is smoking then we should consider a standard protocol that is you should stop 
smoking one week before the dental implant procedure and two weeks after the surgery only he or she can take uh, smoking but the between one week before the surgery and two weeks after the surgery the smoking should be totally stopped otherwise there will be uh, consequences uh, like dental implant failure now advantage why use, use dental implant what are the advantages of using implant first of all the, there is a preservation of residual bone most important is thing is that in fixed uh, if you know in fixed processes we need to prepare the adjacent tooth but in implant no need to prepare adjacent tooth this is one of the most important advantage of implant and it is long lasting and it has excellent aesthetics it is uh, aesthetics is also one of the nowadays one of the important factor for the patient compliance or patient uh, satisfaction so it is aesthetic, aesthetically uh, the best option for the missing tooth replacement with any prosthesis now what are the disadvantages disadvantage of using implant implant then implant is expensive most because it, it costs nearly 40 to 50000 at, at the government hospitals and in private hospital it costs much more and it is also time consuming it may take 4 to 6 months or even 1 year for the total treatment protocol uh, yeah it is also uh, expensive time consuming and technique sensitive now moving towards the topic osseo integration Osteo refers to bone, so there will be integration of implant to the bone. That is, if this is a uh, implant, there should be direct connection between the implant, implant and the bone. This is surrounding bone, so there will be direct. No, there should not be any intervening. Uh, a connective tissue that is between the implant and bone there should not be any soft tissue or connective tissue so the load on the implant directly transfers to the surrounding bone there are two theories uh, one theory is given by wish and other is given by brain mark uh, first theory is fibrous integration Second is osseo integration. Osseo or osteo integration is same thing. Fibrous theory, uh, fibrous integration theory is given by uh, Wyss. This is the scientist name and osseo integration theory is given by brain mark. According to fibrous integration theory, there, uh, there is a uh, there is connective tissue, healthy connect, healthy dense connective tissue between the implant and the bone. According to fibrous theory, and uh, the connective tissue present in between are uh, sim similar to hammock ligament, so that uh, it support the implant, but this theory is outdated this is not uh, now not considered the new theory is osseo integration that is given by brain mark in uh, 1952 and the theory uh, states that there is direct con uh, connection between the implant and the bone there is no intervening soft tissue so that the direct force uh, applied to the implant by the crown portion or superstructure is directly transferred to the bone equally uh, around the implant. This is the brain osteo integration. Uh, it is also one of the mostly, uh, most frequently asked MCU. Uh, osseo, osseo integration is given by brain mark. Now moving towards the stability of the implant. One is primary stability and 
other is secondary stability. Primary stability means at the where we place the implant in the uh, at the bone that is primary stability and secondary stability is after healing of implant placed then it is a secondary. Primary stability is given by uh, the uh, macro design that is if it is a tapered shape it has a more primary stability because it uh, it has the more surface characteristic that bind to the bone uh, and also the quality of bone quality of surrounding bone if it is thicker bone and uh, there is enough bone below it then uh, the tapered uh, implant can be screwed down and there will be more surface integrated with the implant so there will be more primary stability secondary stability help it is given by micro design that is if on the surface if it plasma is spread it will increase the surface characteristics so secondary stability is after healing of the implant and it is uh, given by micro design that is plasma is spread or sand blasted or it surface is, is there in uh, there is surface characteristic is uh, pronounced so it will have more secondary stability now moving to the topic bone density we need to know bone density to know the favorable place for implant placement bone density has been categorized into four four that is d1 d2 d3 and d4 d1 is dense cortical d2 is porous cortical and coarse trabecular d3 is porous cortical and it is thin and fine trabecular and d d4 is fine trabecular pattern d1 is dense cortical and d2 is porous cortical and coarse trabecular and d3 is porous cortical that is thin cortex only then fine trabecular inside trabecular pattern d4 is fine trabecular so uh, D1 is present mainly in the anterior mandible region and D2 is present at anterior mandible, posterior mandible and anterior maxilla and D3 is present at posterior mandible, anterior maxilla and posterior maxilla and D4 is present at posterior maxilla. So the density is more in D1 and D2 is less, uh, it decreases towards D4. So, but in dense cortical region, even the density is more, there will be more stability as general, but in dense cortical, there will be uh, less blood supply, there will be, uh, healing will be slow because of le less blood supply. And in D2, there is uh, porous cortical, but it is thick cortic cortex and coarse trabecular, so extensive uh, blood supply, so it will be better for the implant placement. So, D2 is the best or ideal for implant placement this this one is also one of the mcq now moving towards the minimum distance or amount of bone that is required for implant placement before that we need to know about the implant diameter there has been uh, three types of implant mainly available that is narrow one, standard and wider. Uh, in narrow diameter is 3.25 mm. In standard it is 4.01 mm. And in wider it can be either 5 mm or 6 mm. A narrow diameter is used if the uh, width of the like in anterior uh, maxilla or anterior mandible there is 
uh, buccal liver uh, diameter is less in, the, uh, in that cases uh, narrow can be also used but it has more chances of fracture the standard most commonly used this this standard diameter implant that is 4.01 mm the standard implant has 4 mm uh, diameter and it has length of 10 mm most commonly found is 10 mm length of the uh, implant so uh, for a standard diameter implant we should know major distal di distal dimension required suppose uh, this uh, uh, the air is a missing tooth and uh, if we need to uh, place uh, implant in the in this area we should know how much space is there between the tooth and we should know know the labiolingual diameter height of the maxilla is there so that we can place implant so for 4 mm uh, diameter implant there we should need that there should be 1.5 mm on both side of implant if this is this is implant and uh, this is a tooth this is another tooth so distance between implant and tooth should be 1.5 mm on both sides in major distal dimension 1.5 mm from implant to uh, adjacent tooth and 1.5 mm from adjacent tooth so if we use 4 diameter implant then how much the major distal dimension is required this is 4 and we need require 1.5 and 1.5 on both sides so if we use 4 mm diameter then we have to have 7 millimeter space major distal space so that we can implant place implant of 4 mm diameter if we place wider implant 5 mm then we should add plus 3 that is 1.5 and 1.5 on both sides that is equals to you need to have 8 mm space if we use narrow diameter uh, 3 mm uh, diame uh, diameter then we have we have to have a space of 6 mm basically we should know that how much distance is between the adjacent tooth and implant that is 1.5 mm it has been also asked in previous uh, md exam mds exam and now we should know one of the frequently asked question is if we need to place two implant this is a tooth this is tooth so if we need to place two implant between the tooth how much major distal dimension is required it is frequently asked mcq you know that there was 1.5 mm between the adjacent tooth and uh, implant here also 1.5 mm how much distance is required between the two of the implant you know i have previously said that uh, implant the surrounding should be at least 1.5 uh, mm thickness all around the implant so for this implant 1.5 for this implant also 1.5 so in between how much we require 3 mm 3 mm 1.5 with adjacent tooth 1.5 with adjacent tooth between implant 3 mm and the how much diameter is of implant we are using a standard one a standard height how much 4 this is 4 and this is also 4 so 4 4 8 and 1.5 1.5 3 and 3 6 6 and 8 total how much 14 mm and this is one of the frequently asked mcq either in bachelor level or masters in, in trans in trans level we should know about how much the 
implant should be from the buccal plate this cortical lining then implant should be placed at least 1 mm from the cortical lining and below also if this the implant is uh, standard implant is 10 mm 10 mm so the the lower cortical lining can be 1 mm from the implant but better if it should be 2 mm so if you are using 10 mm height implant then 2 mm from the lower cortex then so the 12 mm so your bone height should be 12 mm you know in mandible we have mental foramen so if you are having here is mental foramen so uh, we can't penetrate the implant into mental foramen because there is mental nerve it will damage the nerve and this inferior alveolar nerve has one so the implant placement should be above this this is if the nerve this mental foramen then it should be at least implant if you are placing implant it should be 5 mm above the mental foramen because if you go near to the mental foramen mental foramen is not at absolute location there may be abrasion in the uh, uh, location so uh, there may be chances of injury to the mental nerve either side if you play we are planning to place implant it should be 5 mm away from the mental foramen and if you are placing an implant it should be at least 2 mm 2 mm from any neural structure if you are placing the implant in maxilla there is maxillary sinus so there should be at least 1 mm now we should move towards the how you know the how much we uh, bone is there present in the maxilla or mandible suppose this is a maxilla then uh, the this tooth is missing so you should know that how what is the thickness of the bone how much height of the bone for this we should uh, do bone mapping bone mapping is done somewhere you will find out it has bone sounding both term is same bone mapping or bone sounding we should know if this is uh, alveolar ridge let me make a this is bone and this is mucosa in clinically we can see the, the, the thickness of uh, thickness here is this much but the original thickness of bone is less than this because this is mucosa clinically if we directly measure it will give the overall mucosa plus bone but we will need to only about bone because for implant we should know about the width, of, width height of bone so uh, we should know that uh, to measure this bone we, we should do bone mapping so bone mapping uh, we need caliper bone calipers are there so what uh, does the bone caliper do bone caliper so bone caliper mainly what the, for measure, uh, doing the bone mapping first you should anesthetize the area where you are want to uh, do bone mapping because uh, the caliper goes inside the mucosa so there will be pain so anesthesia should be given local anesthesia then we place the bone caliper it has two prongs and it goes uh, like this and it will prick this it should it will go inside the mucosa on both sides and it will uh, go up to the bone so 
there, there is reading in uh, in bone caliper was so this reading will give you how much the bone uh, dimension major distal or labial lingual dimension is there in the bone so it will measure that uh, diameter so by measuring the diameter at different places like uh, you at different places you can measure so you can construct similar on the cast so we should do bone mapping to know the bone morphology so that we can place implant and if you have any suggestion or query please comment below